Hey y'all, welcome to a new edition of Answer Me Charlie. It's been a minute since I've done one of these. It's the first time I've done one since putting new music into the world. I hope you've had a chance to check out Fifth Through This Town. And also, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe because i got some more new music coming up and I want you to be the first to know about it. Let's jump right into it, into the questions. Oh, by the way, also the first time I'm doing uh, Answer Me Charlie since becoming a dad. We welcome young Gabriel Thomas Worsham into the world the 1st of April, weighing 6 pounds 11 ounces at 18 and 3 quarters inches long. Uh, and he's just doing great, and his mom is doing great too. And I'm the most proud, just the most excited, proudest papa around, man. It's, it's pretty awesome to be a dad. Let's jump into these questions, what you say. All right, uh, well, since I got new music out, I'm going to answer Sean Trainer Music's question which is, how is it working with Jay Joyce? Jay Joyce produced my new song, Fist Through This Town, as well as some other new music that'll be coming out soon. Uh, it's my first time to work with Jay on my own record. Uh, I've been in the studio with Jay for uh, projects for other artists, uh, most notably Eric Church, first on his Chief album, and then again on his Heart and Soul album that uh, was recorded back in January of 2020. Uh, and I've always been a fan of Jay Joyce's records, always been a fan of working with him in the studio, uh, the experience working with him on my own records, uh, one big takeaway for me uh, was just how he isn't precious about things. I mean, he, he cares very deeply about the record he's making, but as soon as it's done, there isn't a victory lap or anything like that. We don't sit around the studio and listen back to the song five times and get all pumped up. He's already on to the next thing. And that was refreshing for me because I tend to love, once I get something good, to just kind of live in that world for a minute. And it was really cool to be with somebody who was like, nope, we did it. Let's What's, what's next? You know, nothing's too precious. And something about that I think brings out in uh, musicians and for me as the artist, uh, a sort of reckless abandonment that's good, you know, because you're sort of like, you know what, I'm just going to give everything I got on this take because once it's over, it's, it's over. We're on to the next thing. Uh, and so I, I particularly love that. I love that he challenged me to stick to one guitar. Uh, so all the electric guitars you hear, it's just this one guitar. Instead of like fiddling with 20 different pedals and five different guitars and amps, he was like, nope, you got this guitar, maybe this one pedal, and then this one amp. And uh, that freed me up to think more about what I was doing with my fingers as well. Uh, here's another question from Brian. K-A-M-Y-S-Z-E-K. All right, Brian, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, so I'm just going to I'm just going to spare you uh, a, a terrible pronunciation there, but I love your question. Is it ever frustrating to not cut a song yourself? Uh, I've been in Nashville 15 years, and I've been fortunate to have songs recorded by artists that I love and, and respect and by peers that I just think the world of. Everybody from Dirk Bentley uh, to Vince Gill, have, they've recorded songs that I've written uh, with them or, or with other songwriters. Uh, and it's, it's a real thrill to hear your own song sung by an artist you admire. Uh, but I have to say, it's not as frustrating when I don't get to cut a song for myself, uh, especially if another artist records it, because uh, it lives out in the world anyway, and I can always play a song in my set whether it got recorded or not. Of course, I want to record it. Uh, but the, the more frustrating thing is when you think you're going to get a song recorded by an artist and then they don't. You know, I've definitely had songs on hold by different artists, and, and they're doing what's best for them, so uh, it's just how it kind of works in, in the music world, you know. Uh, but it's more frustrating as a songwriter, you know, when, when you think you're going to get a cut uh, by somebody else and then they don't cut it. Uh, but that's part of it, you know. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's a great question. Dalton B29 asked, Do you wait for inspiration or just sit down and punch out a song when writing lyrics? Well, Dalton, every day I try to start uh, with a blank page, filling it up with what's on my heart. Sometimes it kind of comes out as song lyrics, sometimes it comes out as sort of word games, uh, sometimes it's just blah, just nothing, just really terrible stuff. Sometimes it's like a journal. Uh, but I believe in, in cultivating a practice, cultivating a ritual, uh, and the earlier in the day the better, because I, I like to think of my songwriter in my brain as a really stubborn and lazy roommate who never wants to get out of bed. But if I kick him out of bed in the morning, he ends up spending the day with me. And he's more likely to pick up on really cool lines that come through uh, in a conversation at the table next to me at the restaurant or in a, a line of dialogue in a great movie or something I'm reading in a book. Uh, it sort of turns on my radar, you know, to start the day that way. And some days inspiration's with you and some days it isn't. But the reason you practice every day is so that when you are 
you know, when the, the, the wind is filling up your sails, so to speak, as a songwriter, that you, you're you sharp. Your tools are sharp and you, you've you had your practice. Uh, and uh, so you're ready to take that inspiration and run with it. Uh, but you got to be willing to get up every morning and try, even when inspiration doesn't strike. So inf in inspiration is the cherry on top, you know, but you still got to bake your cake <laughs> or whatever they call it, you know. All right, I love this one, Caitlin Benton. And Caitlin and I are old friends from college. Uh, we went to Berkeley up in Boston together. Caitlin uh, asked, favorite breakfast food? Uh, that's a hard question for me to answer. Uh, if I'm in Austin, Texas, I'm going to find some good breakfast tacos. You know what I'm saying? That'd be my favorite breakfast food. If I'm in Ireland uh, or England, I want a full Irish breakfast, full English breakfast, blood sausage, everything. I'm all for it. Uh, and if I recall, I believe in Australia you can find a, a really rocking breakfast as well. Uh, so I, I'm a fan of pretty much all breakfast foods. Lately, in the pandemic, uh, I got in the habit of making my own granola. And so that's kind of been like granola and some Icelandic skier is my sort of healthy, you know, some blueberries breakfast. And I've gotten to where I just love that and look forward to it. But I'm a fan of all, I welcome all breakfast options, you know. Bring me the brunch menu. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scope it out, you know. Okay, No Photos asked, how was it to tour with Kenny Rogers? I was fortunate to tour with Kenny Rogers on his Gambler's Last Deal, his farewell tour uh, on the uh, UK and European leg of that tour. And it was a master class every night to open for him. Uh, first of all, the audiences were just phenomenal and, and wonderful. I'll never forget our uh, concert in Northern Ireland in Belfast uh, and how much the crowd just admired and loved and, and, and gave Kenny all the all the applause and all the love all night long and I, and I was talking to one of the folks that was working with the venue that night and he explained that uh, part of the reason for that admiration was that very few American country singers came over to Ireland during the Troubles. Uh, they were going through a lot of rough stuff in their country and just a lot of people it, they found it easy to take those tour dates off the map. Uh, Kenny never did. He continued to tour in the UK and Europe throughout his entire career uh, and that right there was a lesson. But uh, also uh, just watching Kenny deliver these classic songs and tell these really endearing stories. Uh, he was the consummate professional. He could not have been more uh, generous to me uh, as an opener, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll cherish those memories. He signed a, a vinyl record. Before the tour started, I found one of his vinyl records in a, a shop in Edinburgh and uh, had him sign it, and he wrote, To Charlie, thanks for your help. Oh, so good. My favorite song of his, by the way, is Sweet Music Man. Oof. Powerful song if you haven't heard it. All right, let's see what else. Uh, Rodrigo Rotu, I believe, is how you say this person's name uh, or their Instagram handle or where it was they asked this question. Can you do more songs like Rubber Band? Well, I sure can. I actually write a pretty good number of songs. I'm trying to write more riff-driven songs. They just, for one reason or another, haven't wound up on uh, in, in the new music quite as much. Uh, but I have had a song recorded by another country artist. I'm not sure if I'm at liberty to tell yet. Uh, but it's a riff-based song. So when that comes out, I'll show you. It's a song called High Note. Uh, so if you hear of somebody releasing a song called High Note, uh, you'll know that I wrote that guitar riff. And were I to record my own version of it, uh, it would definitely be very rubber band-esque. Uh, which goes back to Brian's question, like, is it ever frustrating to not cut a song yourself? I would say with High Note, I really wanted to record it, uh, but I'm so glad it gets to have a life with somebody else, you know. So as long as that music gets out there, I'm happy. All right, uh, Jance, Jansen MC asked me, are you a Christian? And uh, th this was actually the question that inspired me to jump back in to answer me, Charlie, because uh, from time to time I'll get on my Instagram and answer people's questions. And it's kind of a rapid fire thing, but every once in a while you get a question that you need a little more time uh, to chew on. And I don't need a lot of time to tell you. I, I'll tell you flat out, I'm a Christian, yes. Uh, I was born and raised in Mississippi and born and raised going to church. Uh, and over the years, I more or less have attended church, uh, but I have a very deep faith. And there's a great quote about faith that I love, that uh, you cannot live the afternoon service uh, of your life according to the morning service. And uh, I may be butchering that quote, but basically what that, that quote is speaking about is, you know, different people grow up in different cultures, and certain cultures have an element of faith. Uh, in their upbringing, and I certainly did. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful way to grow up. 
And uh, faith is a beautiful thing in, in all its forms. And uh, that said, when you do become an adult, you kind of have to, you know, find your faith for yourself. And I think most people in this world go through that journey. Uh, and I and I'm I'm always sad when I see uh, anyone discouraged or putting someone down when they're just trying to find faith for themselves. And I believe in uh, attraction, not advertisement, when it comes to faith and, and Christianity in particular. You know, if we go back and we look at what Jesus said, it had everything to do with helping the poor, healing the sick, clothing the naked, you know, feeding the hungry. Uh, and to me, being a Christian is a lot more about those things than it is, you know, what somebody does in a voting booth, so to speak. Uh, but yes, I'm a Christian, and uh, I, I think it's a beautiful thing. All right, let's get one more question in before this is over. Uh, ooh, upset to Vana, upset Ivana. Uh, Y'all, I'm sorry for butchering these pronunciations, uh, but I love this question. It's a great one to end this uh, episode of the show on. When are you going to tour again? And I don't actually have a great answer for you. I don't know for sure. Although I'm very hopeful that I will be touring before the end of 2021. I know that we've booked one show in Alabama in September. I am very optimistic for more shows to get booked. We are planning on uh, doing an Every Damn Monday uh, in the latter part of 2021 here in Nashville. Uh, and, you know, part of it is figuring out how the world opens back up. Part of it is... Uh, being able to hop on a tour. Uh, at this point, I'm not exactly selling out Bridgestone Arena just yet. Uh, so I've got to figure out what's going to work for me. But the, the plan is to tour. The plan is to tour internationally. And I'm talking, you know, uh, the UK, Ireland, Germany, Australia, any, any place that will have me. Of course, throughout the States, Canada, if, if you'll have me. Uh, but uh, yeah, just stay tuned on the tour question. I am, I am very optimistic that I'll be touring in a matter of months, not years. Well, thank you all so much. Please don't hesitate to drop a question in the comments below or hit me with a question on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, any of the social media platforms. Appreciate you watching. Thanks.